Hey what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. It's been a while since I actually did the former talk about a specific card and character. Well today I'm changing that. Today we'll be talking about Gimpy Gerwin, a bit of the lore behind this guy, his abilities and the recent changes in Gwent to those abilities, and we'll end the episode with a suggestion on how to use him in an anti-swarm deck I put together. Sounds good? Let's dive in. Let's talk about Gimpy as a character first. Minor spoiler warning, we will be talking about a very small part of Thronebreaker with no real impact to its main plot, but if you want to avoid this you can skip ahead to the following timestamp. All good? Final warning, let's get to the lore overview. Gimpy Gerwin is a bandit who settled down in the marches of Angren. By luring in all sorts of desperate people, he managed to set up a community and build a little settlement among the swamps to protect them from the monsters. But their protection comes at a cost. Gimpy rules his little empire with an iron fist, basically enslaving anyone who wants to take shelter in his village and mutilating any who opposes or even annoys him. When Queen Meave meets Gimpy over the course of the Thronebreaker campaign, he seems all charm at first, inviting the Queen and her army into his settlement for a bountiful banquet, a bit of respite in the hostile swamps of Angren. What happens after Queen Meave learns of Gimpy's true nature is up to the player at that point, so we'll leave Gimpy's backstory at that. Back to Gwent, since Gimpy's ability actually fits his backstory perfectly. Living in the harsh environment of Angren, he's used to dealing with monsters in large numbers with his fine axe. When played on the melee row, Gimpy can damage an enemy unit by 3 and all copies of that unit by 1. Originally, Gimpy could damage all copies by 3 damage instead for 1 provision cost extra, which was nerfed in the Novigrad expansion because it was deemed too powerful. His original setup netted you 9 points with removal for 9 provisions, in pretty much most cases, or a lot more if you were facing a swarm deck. While we're at it, let's define the term swarm deck a bit better. A swarm deck is a deck that focuses on playing a lot of the exact same unit, either because of a leading ability or because of the abilities of that unit. The Arakas Queen is the de facto example of a swarm deck, spawning Arakas drones every time one of your units is destroyed during your turn, filling the board with little spiders. At first glance, swarm decks seem to be limited to the monster faction, as the name also implies. This would make Gimpy's original ability seem like an okay but risky deal. You need to play him in a very specific situation to get the most out of him. But pretty much every faction has one or more variations on the swarm mechanic. Northern Realms has the Kedweni Revenants and the Blue Stripes Commandos. Nilfgaard has the Slave Infantry. Skellige now has the Bear Abominations and the Queen's Guard, and even Squiatel kinda has a possible swarm with the Dryad Fledglings. The Novigrad expansion makes swarms even more prevalent with the addition of the Firesworn Gang in the Syndicate faction with their mass of Firesworn Zealots. Novigrad even added an extra swarm mechanic to the Monsters faction as well with the Kikimor Warriors, capable of duplicating themselves by eating other units, such as the Arakas drones from before, and even more quickly filling the field. See where I'm kind of going with this? With Gimpy's original ability, you could destroy every single swarm unit in these examples, aside from the Dryad Fledglings, which have 4 power each, and the Bear Abominations and Slave Infantry, which have 5 power each, which you would damage heavily instead. Without the nerf, Gimpy would become an auto-include, easily reaching 15 points on any of the aforementioned swarm decks. His new ability makes him a more balanced addition, needing at least three identical targets to get his provision cost back, and only being able to counter Arakas Queen directly. With that being said, he can still be incredibly useful. Since I just explained how swarm decks work and how often they can come up, I've created the little anti-swarm deck to deal with them while still being viable in most other situations as well. You can see the deck composition right here, and you've seen some footage of it throughout the episode already, so let's go over how this deck actually works. The Anti-Swarm Skellige deck is focused on continuously dealing small amounts of damage so you can completely control the board. It is led by Krach on Crate, who can deal 1 damage to an enemy every 2 turns, complementing our damage output nicely. The rest of the deck is a combination of some damage engine cards, a few self-damage additions and a lot of crowd control cards. The engines are the ones you use to kick off a round if you go first. 
I'd like to start with Harold Houndsnout in combination with Svalblad Priests to start taking out the skulls he spawns. Once the skulls are gone or you still have Harold, you can use the Shield Maidens to thin your deck a little, the Queen's Guard to set up a swarm of your own, or Blue Boy Lugos to continuously deal retaliation damage. They kinda make the best scenario for a first round, but you can start off with Sigvald or any of the ships in this deck to get some damage going as well. Try to take the first round by keeping the board at low power. Whipping out a greatsword at this point might also be nice to benefit from all the damage ticks flying around. If you manage to take the first round with equal cards left, I would suggest to push your opponent to take the round, the second round as well. Especially if your opponent passes quickly in the first round, your second round is actually where this deck bears its fangs even more. Setting up damage engines early allows you to instantly boost your greatswords and dagur to keep them from getting destroyed immediately. The longer you can hold this off, the better, which you can usually do by countering your opponent directly in the first few turns. Keep your opponent's units low, but don't destroy them, except if they are a real threat, of course. Your final card should be your crowd control cards. Stammelford's Tremors, Lacerate and of course Gimpy all hit multiple if not all enemy units, boosting Dagur and the Greatswords in large chunks. To top it all off, you can even try to set up Regis. Regis damages all enemies on a row by one, which is great on its own, but he repeats this every time he kills a unit with it. It's a bit tricky to set up, ideally you would have a 1, 2, 3 and so on powered enemy on the same row, so he repeats the group damage as much as possible. This stacks with your greatswords and dagger 2 blades, so they reach astronomical numbers. A 1, 2, 3 row composition, for example, boosts them by 6 each, which makes Regis a 14 point play with only one greatsword or dagger set up. But as I said, it's a tricky addition. You can replace him with something like Yennefer of Angerberg or any of the Geralt cards if you're more comfortable with them instead. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this episode about Gimpy Gerwin and the anti-swarm deck. Got any other ideas on how to improve this deck or any interesting facts about Gimpy? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below so we can help each other out. Any feedback is greatly appreciated and of course we're here to learn from one another. Check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynet if you want to talk and if you enjoyed this video why not give it a like, any support is really appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Quent Edge. Goodbye!